Hey guys, I'm Budo Jake, joined with my good friend, Jack Topher. This is week two of a special five week series. Jack has been gracious enough to share some of his special techniques that he's studied long and hard for. Uh, a lot of these things come from guys like Dave Kama, learned some of this from Henry Aikens, some stuff from Hickson. Yeah, last week, Jack showed you how to keep good posture and guard, and uh, it's something that looked so simple, but so effective. Yeah. And that's one thing that, you know, I think we talked to you about it before and other guys, they didn't really want to show it on video because it doesn't translate really well. It's hard to see what's going on, but let me tell you, that stuff really works. And uh, today we're gonna go a little bit further. Yeah, um, I still consider this invisible jujitsu. Um, it's, it's, I think, saved me from countless chokes and thousands of broken arms or arm bars or having to tap. So I personally consider it very important. And uh, this week we're gonna build on top of proper posture in the guard that we did last week. And I'm gonna show you my pass that I used from, from this position. Great, should we review real quick what we did last week? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the main thing with last week is, is I wanna be able to use my body and my hips to keep my posture up and not be reliant on my arms because if I'm reliant on my arms, every time he pops me down, I have to readjust and retry to start my pass again and all this stuff and get back up. If I can use my hips and engage my body properly, he can try to pop me down. He's got nothing, nothing. So from this position, I'm putting a lot of pressure on his ankles, which is in my favor. And then what I wanna do, I'll grab the gi, but it's not to keep him down. It's actually to prevent him from coming up. So he can grab my gi, he can do his thing. I just wanna stop him from coming up. It might seem kind of mean, but one of my favorite places to put my hand if a guy gets up is in the throat. Um, you can also just use the gi and go ahead and sit up and put it in his chest. You may think that my arm is in danger with, from an arm bar, but when I have good posture, go ahead. He's got nothing. He can't even start an arm bar. So what I like to do is I like to scoop back. So it puts a little more pressure on his knees. I'm controlling his hips with my knees. Um, it puts pressure on his ankles when I'm back like this. I have my hips rotated forward. I'm upright. So the pass that I like to do from here is I'm gonna use my elbow, not in the meat where it hurts, where it's mean, not right here, but I'm actually gonna put my elbow just past his knee with my, my fingers kind of pointing up. If my fingers are level here, grab my gi and pull like that. If I have it just a slight angle, pull, use two hands and actually pull. I'm very, because when he pulls me this way, it runs into the back of his knee. So I'll have this hand here to prevent him from sitting up. I get this here like that, fingers slightly pointed up and I'm gonna end up putting pressure here. I wanna use my body weight in one solid continuous motion and go straight to the ground. I'm gonna slide over here. Now, one important detail that you can't see, if you come around back, this will prevent you from getting stuck in someone's half guard. So once I get this here, put me in your half guard, catch that. This is a problem for me. So I wanna avoid that before it ever starts. So I have good posture, I've got my knee where I want it. The second it comes undone, my whole body weight falls right there. I call it a windshield wiper. This back leg, as this knee moves forward, it follows. Go ahead and catch the half guard. There's never a time for him to do that. What I like to do at this point in time is I want to put all my body weight right here, and I'm actually going to use him as a pivot and just hop over this knee. Here. So it's a pretty quick pass. It's very simple, but it works gi and it works no gi. So I'm here, here. Leg follows here. Do it again. So, so first we're in a battle, something like this. Somehow, whatever. I get up. We'll cover that one in, in two weeks. I get up. I prevent him from sitting up. The more he tries to sit up and pull me down, the more pressure on his own ankles. I follow that. Stay here. You can you can do all types of variations, all this kind of stuff if you want. But the easiest one, and it's usually right there, if you windshield wiper that, that back foot in, you just go here, and then you have cross side. Very simple. Are there any common problems you run into with that pass? Um, the only time is if I get a little lazy and um, I don't windshield wiper that back leg in, 
I will have to kind of fight a half guard battle and pass that way. Um, I don't think too many things I run into. I actually, I can pull it off on higher level belts um, and lower belts and it works gi and no gi. Right. Yeah. Uh, another detail actually reminded me. Uh, I'm here going for my pass. The more he's sitting up and pulling, like right now, it's really easy for me to yeah. pop it. You feel that? Yeah. Okay, so here, I like to actually control his hip with this part of my body here. And then that way, I can prevent a lot of the, the hip movement. If I get a little bit sloppy and I'm here, you might do that and start escaping and running away and then we have all kinds of other problems. Mm -hmm. So the second everything begins to take place, boom, I'm here, I got you tight. Everything's tight. Excellent. Cool. Now, if you're on the bottom and some guy tries that pass, what do you like to do? Oh, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Hip movement. I like, to, I like to create hip movement before anything takes place. So if you're sitting upright, you're doing your thing, you got this back there. Hold on one second. Get it back there like that. Yeah. Then also, it's really important too, if it's, um, if it's here and it's nogi, same thing. It's too easy to just start. Yeah, like that. So, and if I'm trying to pull it down, you put the pressure, boom, here. Yeah, for me on the bottom, I just need to create as much movement as I can quick as possible and play shin guard or, you know, some other position. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we went over the first week, posture and guard. Now, a, a very nice pass from the guard. Uh, what's next week going? Next week, don't give away too much now. Okay, it'll, it'll I'll keep it brief. Put me in your guard. Most people, they, uh, they uh, get the crazy eyes. When I'm up here like that, they, all they can think about is hip bump sweep. Here, boom. Exactly. So, um, he's gonna sit up, he's gonna reach over my arm, he's gonna pop his hips, take me over, perfect. And that's usually the correct thing to do when a guy is this upright. Um, if I could have the camera come right over here. Uh, this is one of those moves that makes you just feel like an absolute imbecile. Uh, when you go to hip bump me, the next thing you know, I'm on your back. Now, should we show it or should we make him wait for next week? Let's make him wait for next week. Okay, guys, you'll see this next week. But remember, if you want to see more, please help. This is for a good cause. Please help out Jack's nephew. It's, it's gofundme.com slash BJJ versus cancer. Uh, tell him why, Jack. Uh, my sister, uh, as you saw last week, she's got stage four cancer. I have a five-year-old nephew. His name is Kieran, great kid. Uh, very smart, really active. I just want to provide the best future for him as I can possible when my sister's gone. Thank you guys for the support. We'll be back next week with the move that makes me look like an imbecile. <laughs>